<laughs> okay. Um, no, it's um, I, I can't imagine any other thing I'd rather share than Torah with 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 all of you. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I'm I'm so hungry for Torah and the the fact that I get to be in Eretz Israel and do this is like beyond me. So Hashem, thank God. So Pesach, we're going to continue. Um, we're going to continue with what we with, with with certain themes that we spoke about last week, and then we're going to continue with it. And but I'm but I'm going to start not from that place. I'm going to start with um, something that I that I that's that's it's if any any sifra you saw that you're going to open up about Pesach, you're going to find this theme. Which is like really amazing. So I've been teaching a lot of Likutei Alachas on, on Pesach lately. And what's Likutei Alachas? Likutei Alachas is, is explaining the Shulchan Aruch according to Rabbi Nachman's teachings, which is all Kabbalah, right? And so you expect to open up Likutei Alachas on Pesach and you're going to get all kinds of Kabbalistic high flying concepts and now you're going to know the inner workings of everything and and he says there right dina you were in that and that cheer it's like no what you have to know is like pashtut you you come into pesach don't bring your seichel into pesach because what went on in pesach night is like a, a an opening of shamayim to reveal uh, godly understandings of things that's not according to the madrega where you usually are that could understand. Pesach, the dilug, the, the passing over of regular uh, stations of where we're holding, according to Sechel. And Pesach is like, throw away your Sechel and just open yourself up to the experience. And for that, you need emunah. So if you're going to hold on to anything, what you need to bring to the Seder table is emunah. In what? God, it's all God. It was always about God. And it always is beginning, middle and end, it's Hashem. And all of the thirst and hunger we have, I just like the pin wasn't working, so whatever I'm doing. Oh. It's okay, I'm bad already, I put my phone here. Um, so, um, so whatever we thirst for greater connection with Hashem, It's going, the portal to it is emuna, that it is just Hashem. And that, and to try to define it in any other limiting factor, what am I calling limiting factor? Through the seichel, through something that I'm going to learn and then have in my pocket and then show up on the Seder table with all my notes and I'm going to expect what I learned with these kavanas of the Arizal and Zohar and everything like that. Oh, I'm going to have the biggest like experience of Pesach ever. Forget that. That's a vodas Hashem during the year. When you have to add things incrementally according to where you're holding so that you can grow with it and expand your kli and, and understanding. And then, and you know, as we refine the kli and we, uh, we add more Torah to it, we, we know what to do with it. And then we become appropriate vessels for the greater light that we want. But on Pesach, that's not the equation. On Pesach is like, Shamaim are opening, and if you bring your seichel to it, you lost something. You've limited the experience of the neshama, because the seichel is a limiting factor. We need it. We need the seichel. But during the year, that's the vodas Hashem during the year. Learn Torah and see how to incorporate it into your life and stretch yourself and work on your midas. But on Pesach, if you bring that calculation to the tape, to the seder, then you're mitzamtzem, you're, you're constricting the experience of the neshama from its expansive place of flying high with Hashem to a limited place of what I can understand. And what I can understand is limited. No matter how much I understand, it's just limited. No matter how much of a, a mekubal and a chacham and a tzaddik you are, in relation to the in, infinite experience of God that is out there, it's a limited place. You know, if you're, if you're holding by... Um, if you're an inch away, I remember Rabbi Rabbi New in Montreal. He was a, a Chabad rabbi. He would say this: um, "What's the difference between an inch? Um, no, how did he say it? 
an inch away from infinity or a mile away from infinity? Is there a difference? No. no. Right? So, so trying to bring whatever understanding you have. And then Rav Nassan in the Kutayalach, as he says, what's this? I'll just say this very quickly. What's this answer that we get? The Manish Tanara questions about specific items. Why do we have we eat chametz and matzah during the rest of the year and on this night only matzah? And any of those questions of the Manish Tanar, are they answered? Not really. Like to answer such a question is we eat matzah and not chametz because, and those answers are not there. So the specific answers of the details are not there. What is the answer that's offered? And Hashem took us out with a mighty stretched hand. And that's all we need to know. On Pesach, that's, stop with your chokhmah. The, the Chacham asks, What's all of these mitzvahs about? I, he's my God too. He's not like he's a, he's not like asking from the place of a Russia. I want to know what like, but all of these details of laws, I I I believe in them. I'm going to do them, but I want the pnimius of them. I want to the I want to get into the kishkas of understanding more from it. I want to be able to to really connect everything in its in its most way. And what's the answer? Go learn halacha. They send them back to halacha, to the Shulchan Aruch book, right? And say, and then, and past that, you don't ask any more questions. Because on Seder, it's not the time for like, because no matter how much you're going to do of whatever you're going to do, and whatever you're understanding, guess what? Even what you think you understand to its nth degree is still going to be missing that much from infinity of understanding the aim sof of it. So how much we understand that even about one thing that we think we understand that we learned and we understand and we can relate to it, even in that one item, there's so much more depth to get. So there's no, there's no, so on Pesach, we don't want to limit the experience of the neshama. So what's the recommendation? Show up. And show up with an open heart, with emunah. And what do you have to do? You do the mitzvahs that is taught that the rabbis teach in relation to the, to the, to the Seder. You get rid of the chametz, you have only matzah, you, you, have, you prepare the karpas and the maror, and you do it in this prescribed way, and you read the Haggad in this way, and that's all, and you bring emunah to it. How it works, how this is going to be the thing that's going to open me up to Sharei Shamaim and, and Hasagot Elokiyot, don't don't try to answer that question because then that's bringing chametz into it. That's bringing limitation into it, and you're going to limit the experience of the neshama. What's the neshama? The neshama is already basking in the glory of Hashem. The neshama is it's. Um, <clears throat> Rav Cook is like he he explains a lot about the concept of freedom. The freedom is is of the neshama. Um, it, it, the, the beginning of freedom is to understand what defines you, who you are. That's the true freedom. And the, and the definition of what you give yourself, I'm the neshama of me, not the goof of me. Even though most of the day we're preoccupied with the goof of me. I don't like this, I don't like that. This is too hot, this is too cold, too sweet, too sour. I don't like how he spoke to me, she spoke to me. I don't like this, that, and the other thing. I'm reacting to things from an external place on the goof, that's a chitzoni. But the pnimius, 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 what wants to shine through? The neshama. What's the natural habitat of the neshama? To be basking with the glory of Hashem. And so tr true chirut is first to define who you really are. And then once you come, once you define who you really are, so good to see you, welcome back. It was like a very short visit back. Yeah, yeah. Two, weeks. Two weeks, well, okay. And, um, and so, and that's what it is. So you, so you have to define who you are. That's the biu chametz, what I'm not. And what I am is the neshama. And you bring that to the table, to the seder. And you need emunah for that. You also you need emunah in yourself and emunah in Hashem. Okay, so. And once, what happens? Once you're opened up to this, like once you show up with emunah, pshuta. It's like, what's the simcha of the Chag? How can we feel so much simcha of Yom Tov? It's not from a place of Seichel. There's a portal in Shemaim that opens in this particular time in the calendar of the Jewish year that awesome things are happening. 
And we want to come and open ourselves up to that. And, and the neshama plug is already plugged into it. And we have to just not get in the way. And part of not getting in the way, or part of what's going to help the neshama taftef, like uh, bring um, tiftufim, as it, the, the drops. drops from that lofty place that it's basking in and, and plugging into, and whether we are aware of it or not, but that's the, that's the natural place of the neshama. If we just show up, if the rest of the year we're doing the avoda according to sedim, okay? Not pesa, not, not like, like leaping beyond our, 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 our rightful place of measure. Uh, but if the, the rest of the year we're working on ourselves, we're refining the kli, we're moving away from egotism, we're, we're becoming sweeter and more holy and godly, and we're doing the mitzvot, and we're having a munah when we do the mitzvot, but on the at, at, on the Yom Tov, especially the Yom Tov like Pesach, like the neshama is already like it's it wants to be there, it is there, and if we show up with emuna, not with our sechel, with emuna, then the 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 what do you, do you call it? Tiftufim, the, the drops, the drops, the drippings, <laughs> the droplings, <laughs> droplets, the droplets from the neshama's experience is going to. <laughs> It's a gift. It's going to. It's going to show up in the chitzoni of ourselves. Also, we're going to feel it where in the hergish of the love. We're going to feel the openness of the simcha of it. It's yomte, and we and we want to understand with our brain. But how come I'm feeling like? What is it about this? That, forget that. It's just it, oh, just be present with the experience, and the simcha, the natural simcha we feel in the times of yomte is the is the is the is the um, um, the chirut, the, the the freedom of the neshama to finally show itself up, and Un, unencumbered and uninhibited with all the other stuff that usually holds it back. It's a freedom. The simcha that we feel, any simcha that we feel from a really, real deep and in, in, deep place, an emistic place, comes with it healing comes with it uh, peace of mind, comes with it like, I know what I'm doing. I know where I am in this world. There's me and there's Hashem. And maybe I don't know everything, but I don't need to know everything because like I right now, I know I'm in the right place. It's like Mesudal. It, everything is aligned and I'm feeling like, so it's a happiness that's like beyond Sechel. Don't try to figure it out with Sechel. And so, <clears throat> so when we approach like that, then all of our senses is going to be um, um, available to hear the neshama, what it wants to communicate to us. Because <clears throat> it's plugging into Hashem, because Hashem is, the, this, is this is what Pesach is, it's re revealing Hashem, okay? Now, that was good, right? That was good. And now we're going to go into something else. We're going to go back to Rav Ashlag of what we, we started last week. And we're going to now, after, after I said that, it's, it's a good introduction. Why? Because it's going to get a little bit heavy now in terms of the work we need to do before Pesach to be able to, uh, to uh, arrive at and Pesach in that way. We have to be meva'er the chametz. And if to, to be meva'er the chametz, to show up to such a free experience without all of that chametz, we have to identify what? What is chametz? And once we identify what chametz is, guess what? We're going into our kishkas of like what what are the issues are, okay? And so and so to to identify the work the 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 progress the procession the mahalach how do you translate mahalach? The mahalach. direction. The direction. Process. The process. Process and direction that we need to to be on in order to arrive at Pesach the way we are, okay? So just a bit of a of a chazara from last week. <clears throat> So the question the the it started we started off speaking about like how is it that at the end of the makos we're at the at the threshold of kriyas yamsuf and Hashem like or, or, or before that at makad bechorot and he said prepare your 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 food and there wasn't even enough time for it to rise it's we are reading matzah you have to leave right away because what if you stay there any moment longer. I don't know what's going to happen to you. Okay, like you might get to be a, a, a go get to a point of no return, but that actually, if you look at that, we all know it. We, we say it every year, right? We know this teaching, 
But the question is, how is it that we sink, we sunk to the 49th level of Toma after we saw all of the miracles of, of the plagues in Mitzrayim and we are convinced of the tzidkut uh, uh, of Moshe Rabbeinu, that he's a shaliach ne'eman, of, of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. We, we're already, you know, got exposed to so much Kedusha. So how come throughout this whole process, we're sinking level after level to greater levels of Tumah? Which is what we're all, which, which was what we're told, right? You got the question? Like, why? And so Rav Ashlag explains that the Tum'ah, it's funny, it's like it, what we were learning yesterday with, um, with uh, Rav Cook, it's a different share that I give. Uh, he says the same thing. It's like once you go into Sifrei Sod, once you're going into Kabbalah, it's very interesting. They all say this, they, they pick up on the same things, but each person, each tzaddik has their own beautiful way of expressing themselves. It's their individuality that comes out. So if you read it from Rav Cook, you know, oh, that totally sounds like Rav Cook. And then you read Rav Nassim, oh, that sounds like a real Rav Nassim. But really, they're saying the same thing. And I remember flashlight because they're all drawing from the same source. But it's so beautiful how every person, and that's like, you know, let's give ourselves a blessing that we should find our own individual voice in giving over the Torah, whatever we're learning, and become so personal that it comes out through our individual voice. What a cherut experience, right? What a what a, a liberation of the neshama of an individual expression for ourselves. Amazing. Okay, bezat Hashem. So they all say it, okay? But I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna. So this is Rav Ashlag that the tumah, as soon as you want to leave Mitzrayim, as soon as if you've identified, I am in Mitzrayim. So, but this is not my place. I'm a holy neshama and a. There's no, you know, like, what's a nice Jewish girl like you doing in a place like this? When it finally, like, hits us, like, what the heck, man? Like, I'm supposed to be free. I'm like a, a daughter of Avram Yitzchak Yaakov Saref Karachavaleh. What am I doing here enslaved? Yosef was like, he saved the whole thing, and now we're enslaved? Hafuch alafuch. And once you understand that this is not my place, I am not meant to be a slave to anybody. I have an eshamak dosha that's meant to express itself in all kinds of creative and beautiful and godly ways and master, manifesting potential and actualizing potential. Once you realize how far I am from my own potential in that way, that's the beginning of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Because why? Because you've identified that you're in Galas. Until you have identified you're in Galas, you're, you're not in Galas, you're just nowhere. <laughs> Galas is a madrega. To know that you're in Galas is a madrega. So once I, I wake up to understanding I'm in Galas and I'm, I'm going to make movement towards being free from Galas, guess what's going to happen? The, all the forces of Tuma are going, are, you're dredging it up. You're stirring the pot. So what makes sense that as soon as the, the, the Besora, the, what's the Besora, the announcement, the, the, the message of, of, of Geula uh, is, has hit us, at the same time, we're sinking all of the level of Tuma that we're clinging to us that we weren't aware of before, but we were there, start coming up to our unconscious awareness, right? As soon as a, 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 a conscious awareness, conscious awareness. So like, as soon as I decide to become more um, generous, and be more of a, of a tzedakah giver, guess what's going to be stirred up in me? My stinginess is going to come. Oh. oh. Or a really big bill is going to come. In. <laughs> or, or a really, something like that. Something, but it's going to be specific to the avoda of ruchnis that you decided to take a path on to break, to break that hamage from you. And it's going to come at you. And it's going to come at you, why? Because th because that's that's the but that's the Yisiat Mitzrayim. You have to go down to Mitzrayim in order to come out to Mitzrayim. You have to identify the Mitzrayim in order to go down to that place to break it from that place of now I know what I'm dealing with, and that's why the maror is on the table. That's why the karpas dipping in in salt water is also on the table. They're both about the bitterness. There were memories of why. So why if we're celebrating freedom, how come we're how come remembering, remembering this? Because, because despite all of the lights that, has, that Hashem is showing us Seder night, you still have to have a memory of, you know what, maybe there's still things that 
Yes, I'm, I'm showing you. First of all, we have to remember it <clears throat> because it's only from, okay, I'll give it a, simple, a simpler answer, not the one I was gonna give you. It's the, it's the recognition that you were, that when you're in the bitterness, you're not identifying bitterness. It's hard to deal with it, right? But once you leave it, then you look back at the bitterness, you say, I only experiencing redemption because of that bitterness. Because that bitterness, feeling it as bitterness was the thing that motivated me and brought me to a place of being able to deal with it so I can be freed from it. And unless I'm looking at it, unless I'm feeling the pain of it, I'm not going to that place of healing of it. There's no possibility for me to heal it. So we, so Mitzrayim is like, a you read the two Mitzrayim is a very necessary thing that we have to go through in order to experience the geula that the neshama, that it is, is the neshama's thing to, to really experience, the, the real experience of the neshama. We have to go through the galas and it's a madrega. So when you find yourself in a bad situation and you're recognizing that it's bad, give yourself a yashar koach. <laughs> And then look at it with Hidbonenut and say, okay, so what's my issues here? What the, what's the kink in the system? Why can't I let it go? Why, what's keeping me stuck here? What's the unhappiness and the gripe and the resentment and the, and the whatever and the sadness? Well, like, what is that? It's that's the Mitzrayim that I have, to, I have to go down that pipeline and then break it up from there. Moshe Rabbeinu had to go down to Mitzrayim to free us. He had to like what we were learning with Rav Kook, I'm spending so much time on this. It's just like, golesh. it's like spilling over here. Okay, forget about what Rav Kook says about that. <laughs> you want to know? Yes. <laughs> okay, we're going to go into, okay. So he says, Moshe Rabbeinu shows up on the scene with, with Paro and, and he does these tricks, right? He drops a, a stick and it turns into a snake. He takes the snake and he turns back into a stick, and the and and um, <laughs> so the so the sorcerers. the sorcerers of of Barbara is saying, oh, you're you're coming with these tricks. We're the masters of these tricks. It start like we're like you're going to teach us how to do these tricks. And so the question is, how come he's showing up with sorcery to a place of a sorcery, and there, and he says, and he says, because you can all, because, 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 first of all, to find out what's called a machane meshutaf, like, uh, yeah. it's like, you're not going to take me seriously unless I can show you that I could beat you at your own game. So I have to go down to your own games for you to respect me. So then you can see who you're dealing with. <laughs> And that was the whole point about our own stick then eating up all of the other people's, like the magician's stick. Because like, this is not, what you do is cute. Shkoyach, <laughs> Houdini. But, but this is from God. Like my koach of being able to do that. But he had to go down to that place, that sinor of ra, of, of evil, in order to then deal with it at its own and in its from its own place, and that when when we deal with healing, it's if you know psychology and psychotherapy, you go back to the place of wound. You used to be avoid the wound, be in la la land. Uh, that's going to heal you. No, it's going to keep coming up until you pay attention to it. The subconscious is going to peel. You're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. Then eating disorders and all kinds of things. You're not paying attention. Like hello, there's something that has to be dealt with here. <clears throat> And so you have to go down to that place and face the ra at its own place in order to break it up and get rid of it, okay? And that's, that's the process of biur chametz, to get to the freedom. That's part of the process. That's why Rav, Rav, um, Cook, he says that, um, that chirut, there's two major themes in Pesach, freedom and biur chametz. Okay, and biur chametz. And they go hand in hand, because unless you do Biyo Chometz, you can't get to freedom. And what's the Biyo Chometz? Going down to the Ra and saying, I don't want you anymore. You have no place for me anymore. But from a place of dealing with it. Okay? It's like, oh, yeah, you stuff the stuff in the drawer and just leave the room. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's still there. So now, 
So now we understand why, why we were sinking into the 49 levels of Tumah at the same time that the, that the message of Geula was coming to us. How could it be that I'm seeing God, but yet I'm thinking because it's bringing up all of the places that I'm not connected to God from my own self uh, and not from just what Hashem is revealing to me from the outside. I have to make it a primi work. Uh, Can you say that again? Ooh, can someone else say no, it again? You're saying think God, but finding like that's where like all the. Um, okay, let me. Right. Right. You're saying that God is showing us from the outside, but we didn't yet internalize the total belief that it's God doing it. Like we didn't get it from an inside place. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't get it from our from our from our kishkas that we're still holding on to places that is far from from that belief. That have doubt. That have, that have doubt. doubt. Ah, so now we're going to get into the new thing that I'm going to give you now from Rav Ashlag. Why is it that we can sink into the forty nine levels of Toma while Gula is going on? because we don't have a belief. What are we not believing in? We don't believe in ourselves that we have the koach to overcome all of these issues of Hamid's nature that's keeping me back from the potential of my godly, holy, pure neshama. I also don't believe in Hashem's ability to take someone like me out of that place. And that's why you had so many people staying in Mitzrayim and didn't leave. A fifth believed Moshe Rabbeinu. What did they have? Emunat Sadikim. They weren't holding by a level of their own tzitkas yet. They were still tainted. But they said, Moshe, you're telling me that like if I follow you and I just follow your instructions on it, then I can be like you. I really want to be like you. I really want to be excited. So I'm going to believe that I'm going to believe what you're telling me that I could eventually get there. It's a munat sadikim. Actually, that this is like this is Rav Tzadok Akoin. That's what he says. Okay, so we need a munat in what in ourselves, in our own ability to overcome issues. Muhammad, and we also have to believe that Hashem wants it and he, he can do it and he can. And if we scream out then he'll give us the siyata dishmaya to be able to overcome the things that we need to overcome to get to a place of true freedom from everything that holds us back. Sadness, depression, whatever it is. Anxious about money, whatever it is, right? And, and also to be able to actually get to such a, a talk place and such a pure place that I can actually serve Hashem from a L'Shem Shemaim place. And to do it like L'Shem Shemaim. So what stands in the way? As soon as we get those ideas. So again, from last week, the Russia starts asking, what are you stirring the pot? You're, what, you're so bad the way you are. Who did you murder today? You're not a murderer. Okay, so you're not perfect this way now. So like what? <clears throat> so Ma, what are you what are you gonna what are you gonna um Ma, what, what's why is it worth it for you to kill yourself for for a spiritual advancement? Don't you realize how much how much you're gonna be losing from Olama Zeh comfort, complacent comfort, complacency, and why do you why do you, what do you need to do it? For what? Who says you're gonna be rewarded? And if that's not enough, then the second answer comes from Paro, who asks also a question. So let's say the Russia <coughs> asks, why do you need to do it? Stay home. It's okay. You want to, you know, it's okay. You don't need to clean so much for, for chametz. You could have chametz in the home. Buy a box of matzah, put it on the table. It's enough. Like, okay, Pesach. But then, so let's say you say, but then the so the Yetzir Tov will answer the Rasha, but I want to do it Lashem Shemaim. I, that I want to do like I want to do it like a kosher Jew. So then the question of Paro comes. What's the question of Paro? Who's this God that I have to listen to him? These are all voices within us. All the all the players are within us. All of them. The Marsha Rabbeinus and the Paros. And um, and then we feel that the COVID of it, like all these questions are, are weighing us down. And, and we feel the enslavement to the things that we can't free ourselves from. Why? Why, why should I do? Why is it Kadai for me to give up my Mitzrayim for some greater good that I'm not able to taste it right now? So much hard work. And who's to say that I'm not going to crack in the middle, right? 
And then of course, Mi Hashem. So now let's look at the new stuff from, for this week from, from Rav Ashlag. And he looks at the Pasuk and, he, and he's going to dissect for us from one Pasuk how the Yetzar Hara Rose uh, works and it's, he's going to help us. He's going to help us. Um, what is he going to help us with? Identify the Hamid to be able to actually show up free. Okay, because our work now is to is biur chametz. So there's a pasuk. What's the pasuk concerning the avoda, the avodat parech in Mitzrayim, the, the enslavement, the type of work that Paro put us through. Vayemareru et chayehem beavoda kasha bechomer uvilvenim uvechol avoda basade. Okay, translate. And they made our life bitter from all kinds of avodah kasha, hard work, but hard work, okay, hard work. But avodah kasha, we'll see that every single word here it has another understanding, nuanced in Lashon Kodesh, that it's not just what the English translation loses in the translation, but for the simple translation. And they made their lives bitter with avodah kasha, hard work. Bechomer, maza chomer? With clay. with clay, right? Uvilvenim and bricks. Uvechol avodah basadeh and all kinds of work in the field. And this, this now is going to, he's going to blow it all open. He's going to say what the secret of all of those things, and it's a secret of the Yetzirah, and the secret how our internal paro gets us to stay enslaved. Okay? What's vayemareru? Where's my paper here? Okay. First of all, there's a, we have to understand what avodah kasha is, okay? Avodah kasha, what other Hebrew word begins with, with those three letters? Okay. Avodah. avodah kasha is hard work, but the word kasha is hard. But what, how do you call the four questions of, of the Seder? Kashyas. The Yetzirah throws all kinds of questions at it. Why is it hard? Because of all the doubts, with all the questions that we want to understand things with our seichel, and we're asking ourselves, is it kedai for me? Is it not kedai for me? Like the question of the Rasha. Like, why should I do this? Why should I not do this? That's what makes us like, we're, we don't have the clarity of, of the tamimut, of approaching with the mitzvahs with, with, with emunah pshuta. We want to like, is it worth it for me to get to get up earlier out of bed to do this particular mitzvah? But it's yummy in bed. <laughs> and you need your rest. And, and you need your beauty rest. And you don't want to look like like you need like you need your beauty rest when you're walking around. So 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 it's it's good. So stay in the bed, right? And so all of these things, right? It's avodah kasha from the kashis, from the kushiot. Okay, so now we're going to go to chomer. What's the chomer? What did, how do we translate chomer? The, the clay. He says, shehechmiru alehem ha'avon. Now you say, no, hold on. Vayimareru. Bizman avodah yedeh shelot. Okay, so no, I'm, I'm going, okay. I'm, I have to follow my notes, okay. Yemareru, so they... So they made our life bitter. Why? From Vavodah Kasha, from uh, the bitterness came as a result of all the kashis. So why is this happening to us? Why are we in this? Bizman Ha'avodah, Bikdusha, when we want to approach, it's always really, remember, all of this is happening as soon as we want to wake up spiritually. Then it's going to come up. As soon as you want to get to the Geula, you want to leave Mitzrayim, then Mitzrayim shows itself. Okay? Woo. Right, and that's when the bitterness shows up. Bizman ha'avodah kasha al yedei hashelot sheshalu kushiot. May yelcha mikol avodah zot. And as and and as soon and the more we want to fight it, the more we try to we we um, argue back, argue back. Then the counter arguments from the Yetzirah is going to come to us. And so that's a bitterness. Okay, now let's get to Chomel. A trick, another trick of the Yetzirah is saying, oh, you want, you want to, now you want to be excited? You want to leave things right? <laughs> what about all the sins that you did? Wait, you think that's going nowhere? Like, like what? Like Hashem is just a forgiving thing and it's like, that's it? Passe? 
pass go, collect two hundred dollars, don't go to jail, nothing. Like you just go. What do you mean? That's the fear of homelessness. No, that's that's showing up at Pesach. But we have to do beer chametz. We have to go and 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 face face it. And one of the things that we have to face is understanding that the Yetzer Hara is going to try to convince us that our sins are too much to carry. And that this avoda that you want to now engage in, in holiness is only matim to people who are real tzaddikim and not people like you. Is, is that not something that goes on in our head every so often? No. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> we, have a, we have the tzaddikas here. It's new to you. <laughs> Wait, we'll get her. We'll get her soon. With the word Lavenim, we're gonna get. So the chomer is the 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 chomriyut, the 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 heaviness of of the sins that you did. How chamur it is. Okay, the chomer is like how chamur your avon is. And now you want to just forget it. What? To get to to get to adzvut, so you can stay with Yehush, and then you don't do the avoda, and he got you. Okay, Chaz Vasham. And let's say that's not your Yetzir Hara. Or let's say you've dealt, you, you've heard that this Yetzir Hara of the Chomer, of the Chomriyut, the Chomer, and of the how Chamur it is to be with the sins that you haven't yet completely cleansed and like you think you're just going to get rid of them, you're going to say sorry and it's like over. Let's say you've, you've, you've done with that. Then <clears throat> you, you've, you've handled it. Then you have Levenim, Uvilvenim. What's uvilvenim? The bricks, right? But what other word do we hear in the word levenim? White. White. It's like, so this is a complete opposite um, te'ana, mazatana claim uh, from the Yetzirah, not to keep you back from your avoda. The te'ana, the claim that says, you're a good person. Look how white you are. Look how what a tzaddik you are. You have no, no problems. But that's an extreme. That's uh -huh. different extremes. That's right. Okay. That's right. But that's what it is. That's okay. what being stuck in me turn. Hashem. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> good, 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 good. So it's like you're 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 already holding by schus. You have what's what's what sense do you have? You're white like snow. Mm -hmm. You're you're it's, it's, you're at Sadiq. So what beer chamis do you have to go through? You have no beer chamis to go through. You don't have no chamis to be mavire, to burn out. So then the Yetzirah will, will convince us that we're good. And, and, and that's another trick of not of, of the Yetzirah keeping us away from really taking a good look at ourselves. Ego. It's ego. Well, what about like finding a more moderate view that's also like, because there are two extremes. So like a moderate view might look like you really work hard on yourself. It's not, you're definitely not white as snow, but um you are trying so like no but that's the answer to this but that's yeah that's that's already getting out of its trying we're we're identifying the voices of its trying within us keeping us in its trying and you're you're bringing the, the correct thinking of what we're supposed to do with those with with those questions at, at, with the when the yesahara comes up but i'm trying could it, also be the though? it could be depends where you you're going with it yourself so much because you are already working. No, on so so you so you, you have to so you have to you have to. Okay, <laughs> so another thing we have to yeah, know, right. yes, yes, and the, and what we have to know is that on Pesach, chametz b'mashu is a su, b'mashu. It's forbidden. Forbidden. The chametz even a little nothing. You can't even. Mashu mi hatzileni mi mashu b'chametz b'Pesach. Amiru mi mashu. It, nothing can be nullified in 60, nullified in Rov, nothing. Because you, you have to get rid of it because why, and why is it so important? Because unless you do that, the neshama won't be, it won't be um, 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 in, in, its, uh, in, its free, in its free state of, of being able to plug into Hashem in a way that it's going to relate to the heart, the simcha of the Chag. <laughs> what we said before, you get what I'm saying? Like, it, we want to free ourselves from the chametz, even b'mashahu, and we have to really do hard. We have to, you know, if I'm inappropriate in any way, shape or form, and anywhere in my life, inappropriate, in my any of my dealings with people, my relationships, inappropriate 
with my viewing of myself or how I calculate things. I have to look at that. This is the time to really look at it and to be mevaeret because then I'm going to show up to Pesach and, and, and the neshama will be able to experience whatever it's meant to experience without the seicha. And then, and then it'll, it'll come down to us by doing the simple acts of the mitzvahs. You follow what I'm saying? And but help us. That's it. And so and so you need and Hashem helps us if you have the emuna. So all you can do is what you can do. All you can do is do the best that you can do. Yes. Yes. The best you can. You know, you kill. I, I'm into killing myself actually with these things. I'm like, if people say don't be so hard on yourself, no, like this is the time be hard on yourself. <laughs> and so, but don't get depressed from it. It's going to lead you to depression. Like, no, right, but, yeah. but, but understand that, like, no, do it besimcha. Kill yourself, but besimcha. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and then, and then, and then what, whatever you manage to do, Pesach comes, it's like, okay, that's it. So this right. is how I'm showing up. And then you have to give yourself open to. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, matches. matches or uh, lighters? No. Huh? Okay. No, end post. I'm No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure he goes out the door. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Could, you, could you please lock the door? I'll go there. I got it. Okay, fine. Let's move on. Let's move on. So we got the Yemareru Bavoda Kasha. The bitterness that comes because of all the kashas that come up. Well, and, and then you have a Yetzahara of the Chomer. Chomer, the, the Chubriut mm -hmm. of your sins. Now you think you can actually get rid of all your Chamets. Come on. And then let's say you don't have that. Not she says, I'm 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 good. I don't have so much hummus to clean. I'm like I'm good, you know. Like I can actually go to the beach. <laughs> well, everybody else is like killing themselves. Like yeah, I'm we'll good. Go I'll go to hotel. I'll go to Yeah, okay. That's an interesting phenomenon. Yeah. Boat. We're going to boat ride. We're going to boat ride. Okay. <laughs> and then, so he says like this. <clears throat> There's an order. There's a progression. It's said there. <clears throat> When a person begins with their avoda, then the Yetzirah starts to try to prevent in him in all kinds of ways. How? The Chomer. Now we understand what the Chomer of the Avon, of your sins. And, and that nothing will come out of your avoda. There's still going to be, you're going to kill yourself getting rid of Chomer. There's still going to be Chomer, so why bother? And if we manage to overcome that Yetzirah, then it starts talking about like uvil venim, you're at tzaddik, like no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> and then there's another thing in the pasuk uvechol avodah basadeh. What's that about? And in all of the work in the field, what is the so the Rav Ashlag explains? What is the work in the field? A field. What do we do in the field? What's the work of the field? Plowing, right? Um, planting, plowing, and this is a remez to avodah Hashem. Like to 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 approach Hashem with avoda, like an avoda, as opposed to a being an amidbar. A midbar is like place of klippas, and and you know there's no raking and row and and not raking, like plowing and and sowing and whatever, right? There's nothing growing in the midbar. It's a place of klippas. But a, a field that that produces produce, this is like a, a euphemism, a mashal for avoda Hashem that you're gonna have mitzvahs and you masim tovim, and it's there's it's a fruitfulness there. There's a there's something there. Action, it's it's. Action. Ooh, the, I love what the, you said. The midbar is kind of pure. The with with less action. action and it, and yes, I love what you said. And the, the sadeh is doing something. Yeah. Like, yeah so about that, I'm going to say I'm going to interject something that I learned from Rav Reuven Sasson, and he says about what's the difference between chametz and matzah. <laughs> Take note. This is really a good one. Chametz and matzah. What's the difference between chametz and matzah? Time. 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 Except. Except that um, there's a, the midin, from the ikr of the din of the halacha, as long as you're needing it, as long as you're like working it, it can never be chametz. So even if it's after after 18 minutes, you can do it for a whole hour. As long as it's bepeula, as you're you're working with it, it can't be chametz. So it's a, it's a, the ikr din, and so and so. 
So they do it with, with 18 minutes, do the whole thing, get it and baked and everything from the time that you bring water and flour together. But but the truth is, it's the it's the what's the difference between chametz and matzah? It's the time, but it's also that the that the dough that is constantly being kneaded, worked over, can't become chametz. So what's chametz? Idle dough. Complacency. Complacency, idle dough. And where you have idleness, you, you have a yetzahara. Wow. That's when all the kashyas can come in. That's where all the avodat kasha comes in. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Chametz yeah. is idle dough. I, idle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chametz is like yeah. dough that's not being manipulated anymore. You're leaving it to rise. Mm -hmm. It can only rise, inflated ego and everything like that. Whatever the chametz represents. It, if it's left alone, because I, the midot, it's still leaving them to be exactly yeah. as opposed to working on mm. them. If you're yeah, working on them, if you're work in progress, that's so beautiful. Now we've got another additional and the work in progress. As long as you're working on your midos, even if you didn't get there yet, right. you're in pro, you're not hamates. That's the answer. I love that. that. So not in the oh, desert. So much wrong work. Mm -hmm. The answer yeah. is that I'm working. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. I think that's the myth. Yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Ah, this is a tradition that's coming up on this table today. <laughs> Dahlia, you had you see how important you had yeah, to come today. Yeah. You had to come today. <laughs> we missed you, man. Yeah. Okay, so avodah So how do we relate that bechol avodah to the to the the thing that mitzrim miriru et with all with all bechol avodah. So they embittered us also with with all of the work in the field. That after we we did the avodah Hashem, like we went through the chomer. We've dealt with that. We went through the Levinim. Then what's left? So we're not, we're, we're, we're in process. We're working on ourselves. We're looking for the chametz, getting rid of it. And mm -hmm. as long as I'm in process of looking for it, I'm doing good, right? And and I've dealt with like, like the voice in my head, okay, you've done enough. Like go watch some TV or something. I don't know. <laughs> Does anybody ever even like do that anymore? Okay. <laughs> What's the TV? So, <laughs> so, um, so then, what's the next? What's the next level of Otis Hashem? We don't. We 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 have a good perspective of us of Avera, and we know we can do tshuva for them, and it's good. Hashem wants it. We've dealt with the fact that no one's perfect, and even though I I haven't been able to identify something wrong with me lately, but <laughs> okay, you know what? No so one's perfect, and I'm like I'm okay, <laughs> and so I'm going to approach Hashem and and beg Hashem for rachamim, even somebody uh, okay like me who's not so like bad, but like still I need Rachamim to be. What's the next level of Avodah Hashem, ladies? To do things L'Shem Shemaim. Mm. Now, not just stam to do it, but to do it L'Shem Shemaim. So I'm doing mitzvahs, but now what about the, what about the L'Shem Shemaim way of doing it? So you're doing it, the Yetzirah will say, but you're doing it L'Shem Shemaim. Are you not still being self-serving? Is your ego still not there? Like, I think it's always there. And so, if you can't get to Hashem Shamaim and you're doing self-serving, then that's going to bring us back to like all of the other, like go back, go back. Is that the Sahara asking you? It's it's a it's a Mitzrayim, it's a paro in us. It's a it's a it's it's an inner. Yeah, yeah, but not from a good place trying to get us pointing it out that we should doing it. You're not, you're still, you're, you're, you're fake, you're scoffer. You're still you're fake. Scoffer inside. Yes, fake. exactly. You think you're so holy. And so that you're also is a point of bitterness that holds us back that we don't believe, we don't have that munah that we could actually do things from a Lashem Shemayim place. Once we're dealt with the other Yetzaharas, and if you're holding on that level, then you still have a Yetzahara of like that, of that scoffing voice, like you'll never get to Lashem Shemayim. Mm -hmm. This is what keeps us going. You have to have the Yetzahara. You have to have the Yetzahara. And that's why I always say, ever since I started learning Rav Ashlag, my best friend is my Yetzahara. I love my Yetzahara. Because he, he motivates me. Keeps me going. Otherwise, it's Hamid. It's that dough that doesn't that is left to just keep rising and rising. There's no, there's no work. There's no work. Yeah. It's like they say, no, you're animals. Exactly. And so, and so, and so, all of these things. How do they come to us? Avodah kasha. That's what the uh, that the that all of the of the experience of being enslaved in Mitzrayim was avodah kasha. 
And that's like, historically speaking, what happened, there was a paro and there was people and there was enslavements and there was whips and there was board, uh, mortar, uh, like what bricks and mortar and everything like that. But on the internal level, every person has to see themselves that Hashem takes them out of Mitzrayim. And we have to understand that this is a process that as it happened then, it's internally microcosmically happening within us. We have a Navodah Kasha, which is represented by all the Kashas in our head. that's trying to keep us away from our Voda of, of you know, keeping us stuck in our Averas or keeping us like um, um, delusional about our real, our own standing that we think like we're, we're really okay completely. And, and if not that, then, who can actually who can actually get rid of their ego to such an extent to do everything the Shem Shamaim? And so that's a from Moshe Rabbeinu. I'm not a Moshe Rabbeinu. Leave me alone. So I'm going to accept my station. But really, it's for all of us. We can do that. We can stretch. And so, <clears throat> and then what happens from all of that? What's the next pasuk? From all of the avodah kasha, what was the next thing that we read about? From what? From the avoda kasha, from the from the all of these, right? Turmoil inside. And they screamed out, and and this, their screams and their sighs rose to Hashem. Min ha'avoda from that avoda. From the avoda of what? From the, I, 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 I want to be free, but there's so many issues there. Ah, Hashem. And that's when you need a muna, and you need, you have to understand, if, unless you scream to Hashem, the resources, internal resources are not going to help you. You need the siyada dishmaya. You're not going to figure it out with your brain. You just got to, at a certain point, realize on your own, Right. And then and then once we answer, and once we got answered, Ken and then once we got answered, okay, no, hold on. What is he saying here? What time is it? Oh, 12 o'clock. And so, so what can we what can we take from all of this? We want bracha, right? We want to get to a free place, this place, really to get to a place of freedom that we haven't been able to experience any of the other years. We want this to be the final Pesach, after which Mashiach will come and it'll be the final Gula Be'ezrat Hashem with no more having to go through this again. That Be'ur Chametz is going to be what it's meant to be. And there's a Chazal that says, Lefum Tzara Agra. What does that mean, Lefum Tzara Agra? According, according to the pain is the reward. According to how much willingness of how much we want to kill ourselves for the freedom that we want, so desire and so want, how much investment into the scrubbing of ourselves internally, of where am I still not sweet, tahor, kadosh, holding on to issues, holding on to resentment, holding on to whatever it is, self doubt, a false images of ourselves, false images of others. I just spoke to somebody today. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like teenagers at a certain point, they realize that their parents aren't the gods that they thought they were when they were little kids. And then they become broigas with the parents as if like they lied to them, but they're not perfect. And his child has to realize at a certain point, once he gets over that teenagehood, you know what? My parents are not perfect, but it was an it was it was not correct for me to to put that on them to begin with. It was a faulty thinking that led me to the disappointment because it wasn't there. But they tried their best. Like like at the at the end of the day, they tried their best with what they had. They didn't wake up in the morning thinking, "How am I going to screw over my kid today?" <laughs> uh, that wasn't their intention. And so you come back with a greater perspective of saying, okay. <laughs> and so you see like, and that's getting rid of chametz too. When you give people a break, you don't hold on to the, to the, to the issues that you have with them. There's, there, the chametz is all over the place in all relationships, in all aspects of, of the arenas of our life. 
And so we want, so, and, and the lefum tsarag, according to the effort, according to how much willingness we go to suffer, the, the, everything that holds us back from it, that's going to be the reward of it. How much you invest in it is how much you're going to, to gain. <clears throat> and the bracha, which means in, in the language of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, the more you feel Mitzrayim, the more you feel the Mitzrayim and this enslavement to Mitzrayim, the avodah of Mitzrayim within you, the more you're going to feel the ra, the ratzon atzmi, or whatever it is, the ra within you, to the point that it's causing you to then scream out to Hashem, I need your sad that Ishmael, if you don't help me, I'm, I'm a goner here in Mitzrayim. Until, until you right, you've exhausted all possible other resources. And, and that's, that's, the, that's, if that's the thing. Unless you do that, then the measure of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim is according to how much Mitzrayim you're going to allow yourself to feel you are in. How much exposure to the ra, to the evil, to the pain. And it's painful. But where that's the challenge. And Hashem believes that we can do it. He believes that we can do it. We're not going to break from it. We think we're going to break. But we're not going to break from it. To, to look at it and, and, and look at it from a contemplative place, a detached place and saying, I want to deal with this. Not get sunk into the drama. Once you get sunk into the drama in your head about it, then she believes she said this is it. And then you can't get out of it because you're like, you're experiencing as if something happened just now. So you need to like have an observer stand and look at it and say, I don't want those reactions anymore. And you feel all of the ichi pichis, how it, it raises, like when you think about this person or that situation, how the anxiety and the fear and the hate and the jealousy and the whatever it is. And then you're saying, but I'm going to look at it now and say, and identify it as Mitzrayim, all of those feelings. And it's ra, and I don't want that ra enemy anymore. And you're identified as a ra that belongs to you, not because of any outside force that's acting on you and with it with, for you to and so then the gula happens and that's how and that's how we get healed and really redemption is healing the the redemption that we want to experience in this time is 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 none other than the healing of the of our own nefesh within our body the body is the chitzoni <clears throat> And there's an neshama that just wants to be free. And so we have to do a biu chametz in order to get to Pesach. Can't do it any other way. And so without going into like too much depression over it, whatever we manage to do it, whatever we manage to do, that's what you show up. And there's, there's, and Hashem wants, he's, he opened it up for everybody. He opened it up for people who were sunk into the 49th levels of Tuma with their matzah on their back. So we have to remember that. And Hashem has knows about us, and He wants to, and He so He so he, He's going to give us this challenge, and then the rest of the year we'll unpack more of it, we'll deal with more of it. But just really show up with as much simcha as possible, do the avoda before, and then befashtu to do the mitzvahs of that. Enjoy like some tzaddikim they kiss the matzah before they break it for the yachas and everything they do. I don't do they kiss the mara. I don't know if any. I never heard of it, but why not? It's a mitzvah. And it brings us to our greater good, ultimately. So, Bezat Hashem, Yiratzon, we should get there. In full gula. Thank you so much. Bezat Hashem, We'll get there. Thank you so much for joining. Bye. I know. How do I? Did you record that? Yeah.